Hey guys, Mono here, and now that Update 12 is out, I wanted to give you my thoughts on it. Talk about what I like, what I don't like, and what are the most significant changes to the game right now, in case you haven't played Hella Loose in a while and you're jumping back with the update. So first of all, let's talk about the new map, Remagen. When they first announced this map, I made a video saying that I don't think it's a good fit for a game like Hella Loose because the unlimited RD allows you to pretty much shut down the bridge entirely if you want to. And when you add to that the AT guns, the machine gunners, and the tanks sitting on the other end, it's almost impossible to make it across. Everything I said in that video pretty much holds up to what I experienced with the map. I understand that it's based on a battle that was extremely tough, but as a video game experience, fighting over the same bridge polygons without any real chance of winning for an hour and a half just isn't very compelling. It relies very heavily on the use of airheads to get you across, but those are very easy to counter because there's a lot of visibility and there's only like 10% of a grid row of landmass available for you to drop them. So it's, yeah, it, it's not the best. It's at its best though when the middle point is the actual bridge, because then you don't actually have to make it across in order to cap the sector. So yeah, it can be good if the teams don't actually use artillery as much as you can and don't really set up around the bridge, but otherwise it can get really boring, which is a shame because the other areas on the map are very cool. The town areas on the allied side are very different from others in the game and they play really well and the German side plays a bit like Hurgen Forest, but with some crazy elevation changes and a better looking forest, so mixed feelings about it. It can be a good map, but it's very dependent on what that middle point is and the team's not actually using the artillery to its full potential. So I just don't think it's a really good fit for the game. I wish they had spent the time developing another map that would play better, more consistently. The good thing is that there's a night version which plays completely different. Airheads are almost impossible to catch on night maps, and though I've never been a fan of the airhead, it does force you to really set those garrisons up for defense and makes for some very epic pushes between both teams. Night Ram again plays really well, I think, and most of the other night maps do as well. I haven't really played Kursk since the PTE, but I thought it was really cool to have such an open map with much, much lower visibility. I can't really say the same thing for either Foy or Purple Hot Lane, though. Foy plays almost exactly the same as the day version. There's really not much difference in terms of how much visibility you have. And PHL as well, P Purple Heart Lane is still Purple Heart Lane. The night cover gives you a bit more wiggle room when flanking, but again, the visibility is very similar. And I would like to see both of these maps with like a denser, deeper fog, especially Purple Heart Lane. I think it would suit the atmosphere of that map a lot better and it would change the way it's actually played. Right now, it's very much the same. Hurtgen Knight is pure insanity. You can't see much at all. Tanks are really blind and for a map that's always been very heavy on the red zone garrisons, I think it's perfect. I need to play more of it, but the two times I played it so far, I really enjoyed it. Speaking of the night maps, I love the new muzzle flashes. They create this risk reward thing where once you open fire, your position is very much instantly revealed. So you really have to land that first shot or you're pretty much screwed. I love the way it lights up the surrounding areas as well, though I do wish it were increased just a tiny bit more. And in the day maps, it's obviously less visible but it still makes enemies more visible when they're shooting at you, which has always been a major complaint with Hell Deuce and one that I've always shared. It's sometimes just impossible to see who's shooting at you if they are behind a bush or something, and this helps that problem. It doesn't completely take it away, but it does help to see who's shooting at you. Another added visibility tweak is the blood splatter when you land a hit on someone. When it's subtle, I think it works really well, but sometimes it's this massive cloud of red dust that's like bigger than the player models, and it looks really bad. It's very excessive. It looks out of place compared to other effects in the game. I think all of the blood splatter effects or models or whatever need to be reduced quite significantly. I'm pretty sure there are different ones depending on how far away you are from the player you're hitting. So maybe that's what needs to be tweaked or something. I like the idea. I think it works, but I think the implementation could have been better. I really hope they make some changes to it quickly because it just does look excessive and a bit out of place. I almost forgot to talk about Omaha Beach, which got two new versions with a bunch of new assets and it looks incredible. 
the beach with all the boats and the tanks and everything set up by the allies looks amazing and I think it provides for one of the most atmospheric and detailed areas that we've seen in the game so far. Hopefully that's a sign of what is to come in future maps and updates. The new warfare mode plays really great and highlights the best areas of the map. Omaha has always been one of my favorite maps but the offensive mode made it play in a way that I don't think is the best. Like the allies could get camped really badly on the beach and just never make it out and some of the areas in the map are pretty much impenetrable if you set up proper defenses so it was very hit or miss some matches were great other times you just couldn't wait for the map to end warfare adds a whole new dimension to the map because you're not just fighting over the black circles you're fighting in a much broader area for control of the map and i prefer that approach in most of the maps in hella Luz. Then there's the German offensive mode where the allies control the map and the Germans launch a counterattack to push them off to the beach. I only played that mode once and it feels weird to do a reverse Omaha beach landing thing. But the cool thing is you don't really have to deal with that initial beach camping area. So overall, I really enjoyed both new versions. All right, Panther time. The Panther got reintroduced to the game after a hiatus and now it's back and it's incredible. Probably the best tank in the game right now. I've talked about it with Razbora and Fresh Baked Goods and other tank players uh, since they've had more time with it than me. And it's basically a Tiger hull with a medium turret and a gun that reloads faster than the 76, so it can outgun pretty much anything. It can be hit by mediums from any angle on the turret, it seems, which is a great way to give it some weaknesses. And it costs 600 fuel, so it's the same as the Tiger and. I'm not sure if there's a reason to get a Tiger when you can get a Panther because the added mobility and the angled armor on the front of the Panther makes it more likely to bounce shots. So it just seems like a better tank overall. And lastly, we have all the commander abilities and the flare guns. The new commander abilities both suck. The precision strike costs 500 munitions, which is more than a bombing run and a recon plane combined, which is 450. So it's really not worth it. If you need to neutralize a tank, dropping smoke artillery around it is a cheaper and slightly more effective way because there's no risk of you losing 500 munitions if the tank moves. Building an AT gun is also cheaper and more effective. So there's really no point. It also has a 20 minute cooldown, which I'm pretty sure is there. So you don't make the mistake of using this twice in a row because it costs so much. And the ammo drop box is useless as well. It has no real strategic value apart from maybe using it on a defensive point when playing offensive. But other than that, there's like really no point. The flurry guns are okay, I guess. I still have some mixed feelings about the large radius that they can spot enemies on. I wish they were just used for illumination in night maps, or maybe the spotting radius could be smaller or something, but it's going to be one of those things where we're gonna have to see how this gets used or abused in the next few months, and then ideally the devs should tweak it accordingly. Overall, I really like the update. I've had some performance issues on Omaha, which went away when I restarted the game, so I'm not sure if that's like part of the thing or if it's affecting everyone or what, but I really like the night maps. I think Remagen is again hit or miss, but can be a very cool map and the muzzle flashes and blood I'm mostly positive about, though I think the blood specifically does need tweaking. I still need to test some of the changes as I'm almost certain that the running speed has been increased and I also think they nerfed some of the weapons like the MP40 which feels less deadly at range than it did before, but I'm not sure if that's the actual gun or if there's some hit registration issues going on. So if I do find anything interesting, I'll make a video about it. So keep your eye out for that. And yeah, as always, I hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a like if you did, and I will catch you in the next one.